All right, so welcome everybody. I've just started the recording. So welcome everybody to experience it, learn it, use it. Uh, this is the sixth in our series of professional development webinars where you, the teacher, become the student. So you will learn teaching tips and ideas through taking part in the lesson today because the best way to learn something is by doing it. Um, I have been teaching and training in ELT since 2001. Um, my name is Will Lashett and I'm the teacher trainer Asia for the Na National Geographic Learning. And while we're talking about teaching, um, I just want to do uh, a very quick poll um, just to see what kind of teachers we have here today. So you should be able to see on the screen, can you see that? Can you see the poll there? Um, so it is a multiple choice question, so you can choose as many as you like. So what age groups do you teach? Is it very young learners, young learners, teenagers and young adults or adults? Okay, so I can see over 30 of you have voted already. That's great. I'll just give you a few more seconds before I share. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so we've got 73% uh, of you have voted. Okay, so I'm just going to end the polling and I'm going to share the results. So uh, hopefully you can see these on your screen now. So let's have a look. So we can see most of you um, here today are teaching teenagers um, or young adults. And also uh, that's 61%. We also have almost half of you are teaching adults. So that's perfect because um, we are focusing today um, on one of our uh, adult and young adult titles. So that's great to see. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna mention this at the beginning because we, uh, we get a few questions about this every week. So we do get a lot of requests about certificates for these uh, webinars. So I just want to be very clear. We will send you um, a follow-up email to all attendees who are here today. So the follow-up email will be sent out tomorrow. And in this follow-up email, um, there will be a link to the video recording of this session. So you'll be able to re-watch it if you want. And there will also be a link to a short survey. And what you need to do to get the certificate, you need to take the survey. So you need to click on the link for the survey. And there are just a few questions. And at the end of the survey is a link to the certificate. And you can download the certificate from the survey. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just to be very clear. Okay. So, tomorrow you will get an email, a follow up email. Please check your junk mail folder because sometimes it gets sent into there by mistake. So, in the email, you will see a link to a survey. You click on the link to the survey, take the survey, it'll take you two minutes, and then you can download the certificate from there. Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, I hope that's very clear and everybody is able to find that. Okay, so let's have a look uh, at today's, uh, today's lesson. Okay, so today's lesson is um, from um, Life Pre-Intermediate, and it's from Unit 4, and it's called um, A Micro Adventure. Um, we are going to send you the, I think Kitty might have already done it. Um, Kitty, can you put the, um, can you put the link in for yes. the LIFE website there? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, if um, at the end of the, at the end of the session, if you'd like to go and visit the website, um, you'll be able to find a lot of information about the program that we're looking at today, which is called LIFE. Okay, so make sure you save the, um, the URL, which you can now see in the chat box. Okay, so um, as I said, we're looking at life today and we're just going to do a second, okay, very quick poll here. Um, I just want to see, um, I want to see what, oh, I'm using the wrong poll there. Okay, let's get the right one. Um, I'm going to launch the second poll. So this one um, is just about the LIFE program. So I want to know how familiar you are with National Geographic Learning's LIFE series. Um, so you can just click one of the buttons there. So either you've used it before, maybe you're using it now. Uh, maybe you haven't heard of it, but you're interested in using it, or maybe you know nothing about it. So let's see 
how many of you um, are familiar or unfamiliar with this title? Okay, I'll just give you a few more seconds. All right, and we've got over 70% of you now have voted. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna end the polling and share the results. Okay, so as we can see, um, about uh, just over a third of you, 36% have either used it before or are using it now, so that's great to hear. And 38% of you um, have heard of it before and are interested in using it. Okay, so that's great. So um, yeah, we will, um, we will be able to contact you with more details. So when you're doing the survey, um, if, you, if you tell us that you're interested in receiving more information, then we can get in touch with you um, and, yeah, and supply you with anything that you might want to know about the program we're looking at today. Okay, tw uh, quarter of you, 26% have know nothing about life. So that's perfect as well. So today we'll give you uh, a little taster about what the about what life is all about. So I'm just going to explain a little bit now. Um, so life is, um, it's one of my uh, favorite programs and it's for young adult and adult students and it encourages them to connect with the world. So it is a six level integrated skill series with grammar and vocabulary and it is full of stunning National Geographic content, video and engaging topics. Uh, which inspire learners to become informed decision makers. Um, it also helps students to obviously increase their English ability, but also their ability to think critically and communicate effectively in the global community. So it has a very heavy emphasis on critical thinking and uh, becoming a global citizen. So these are the two of the reasons why I really enjoy this program life. Okay, so let's have a look. I'm going to talk very briefly about um, what I think makes a great lesson and why, um, why I've chosen the lesson that I've chosen today. So uh, this is the lesson. Okay, it's, uh, this, this is the spread actually from the student book 4F, a micro adventure. And I'm going to mention a few things which I think make a great lesson. So first of all, great lesson needs to have good content. And this lesson we're looking at today is based around a two minute video featuring a National Geographic Explorer. His name is Alistair Humphreys and his friend. Uh, now, Alistair is a real explorer. He's cycled around the world on his own. Um, he's done many incredible things. And one of his ideas is to encourage other people to have their own adventures, which are easy and cheap to do and which are local. So this is the micro adventure concept, which this lesson is built on. Um, and this authentic video is made by a real explorer. So it's interesting and it's inspiring. Um, a good lesson needs interaction. So this lesson has lots of opportunities for students to interact with the materials and with each other, as I will demonstrate throughout the lesson. Good lesson needs variety, and we will cover a variety of task types today. And the life course in general features a huge amount of ancillary materials to add breadth to your lessons. And finally, we need um, a strong structure. So uh, this lesson is carefully planned and structured with activities that build from one another and make teaching very simple. You can see it follows a before you watch, while you watch, and after you watch structure, um, which, which works very well. Okay, so I think it's very important to signpost to our students uh, the objectives of the lesson. So I've just put some in here. So today we have two language objection, objectives, which are grammar, which is looking at um, regular and irregular past tense verbs, which were covered earlier in the unit, and also vocabulary, uh, guessing meaning through context. So this is a strategy, vocabulary strategy. We also have some skills objectives. We have listening. Um, it's a video lesson, so it's mostly listening and speaking. Um, obviously, these objectives are tied in with the language objectives. So when they are narrating, when they're speaking, they will be uh, using um, the they will be using the past tense. Okay, so they will be actually practicing what they've been learning earlier on in the unit. Okay, perfect. So today um, we will be using um, a piece of software called the Classroom Presentation Tool. And this software is available um, if your school is using the LIFE program. Um, we can supply, 
we can supply this software to you if you're already using the program. And this software is perfect for classroom teaching and for online teaching. Um, if you are teaching online at the moment, I find the combination of using a print book for the students and the CPT for the teacher uh, really works perfectly so that you, the CPT has all the content from the student book and the workbook so you can show the students, has all the audio, all the video, has all the interactive activities, but the students still have their book at home so they can, uh, they can do the activities in the book and they can still do their homework and things. So that's a very nice combination. Okay, I'm just going to stop sharing for a moment and I'm going to swap over to the lesson. Um, so I need to do a new share. And I am going to share my, I can share my screen. Okay, here we go. I'm going to end that and we're going to go into the classroom presentation tool. Um, can someone just let me know, um, can, can you see the classroom presentation tool right now on your screen? Yes. Yes, okay, very good. Okay, perfect. So here we are. So um, this is what the landing page looks like. You can see here we've got the student book and we've got the workbook. So you've got all of the content from, uh, from both of those here. Um, you can see at the bottom in the workbook, you've got an IELTS practice test for your students. Um, and in the student's book, we've also got all of the grammar, grammar summary pages. We've got extra resources down here, um, including uh, business writing worksheets. Um, if, you're, if you're teaching working adults, we've got all of the communication activities. We've got all the front matter from the student book. Um, so we've got a lot, of, a lot of resources all in one place, which makes it very simple to use and uh, very effective. You're not always looking around to find things. So let's get on to uh, the unit we're looking at today, unit four. Um, we can see here when I click on unit four, I can access any of the lessons. So there are six lessons from A down to F and we are looking at lesson F. So I'm gonna click here. You can also see there's a review page and uh, some language practice games at the end of every unit. So here is um, today's lesson. And um, we're gonna start off with, uh, with an activity um, just to get us thinking about, um, about the past tense. As I said, that this lesson um, is at the end of the unit and it's been practicing the past tense. Um, so if I have a look, if I click into the activity, it says here to make a list of things you did in the last 24 hours. So what we're going to do here, I would like you to type into the chat box. I would like you to type in at least three, uh, maybe up to five, things that you did yesterday okay using the using the past tense okay so uh, just in one chat okay so don't hit return after each action i'd like you to type into the chat box between three and five things that you did yesterday so i'm going to do it as well Okay, so Andrew says, I worked on a project, I ate lunch, and I drove home. Okay, great. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Tevin says, I played football, moved into a new apartment, and took a nap. Okay, sounds like you probably need a nap after such a busy day, Tevin. So that's a great idea. Kitty says, I practiced piano, ate lunch, and did a bit of running. Uh, Paulus says, watch, listened, and wrote, but I'm not sure what he watched or what he listened. Um, is anyone else? I've got some more down here. I sang a song. I ate dinner. I taught English and I bought candy. Jacqueline, you bought candy. Good. I hope that was tasty. Uh, Ni Wayan says, I watched movies. I had cinnamon rolls for dinner. Wow, that sounds lovely. And I played with my puppies in the park. Okay, perfect. Here we go. So we've got a lot of nice answers here. Uh, Ragnarok says, I went to the local market, bought several peaches and cooked my own dinner. Uh, Annie cleaned the house, watched a good movie and couldn't sleep afterwards. Okay, this is excellent. And I'm noticing here that all of your usage of the past tense is very good. Okay, I can't see any mistakes at all. Okay, so I've got nothing to correct. Uh, but yeah, that's very good. Um, so all of you uh, have had busy days yesterday. So if we were in the real classroom, okay, what we would do is that we'd do this as par uh, pair work. We'd get students to first give them two minutes to prepare and then to share their ideas and then get feedback from a few individual students. Uh, as we're online, uh, we're just going to get you to type into the chat box. Okay, so that's a little warm up just to get us thinking about the past tense. And we're going to move on to uh, the next activity. 
um, which um, is, we're going to have a look at this beautiful picture and we're going to talk a little bit about what we can see in it. So as I said, the video we're watching today is about two friends who take a 24 hour trip uh, to this beautiful location. So I'm just going to zoom in on the picture there. I'd just like you to type into the chat box, um, what, what can you see in the picture right now? So just any words, anything that you can see, okay, just type that in. A mountain, Jamal says a mountain, okay, trees, Sophie says some trees, we can see some rocks, a bay or a harbour, very nice, we can see the ocean, the sea, the mountain, okay, perfect, so we've got lots of, the beachfront, well done, pine trees, rugged terrain, a cove, okay, so we've got some, we're enlisting some really nice vocabulary here, that's perfect, okay, now what I'm going to ask you to do now, um, you should be able to see a menu um, a zoom menu and you'll be able to see a pencil that says annotate so it's either at the top or the bottom of your screen so can you see this annotate so what I'd like you to do is click on annotate and I would like you to click on stamp and then I'd like you to choose one of the stamps so there is an arrow a star a heart a tick a question mark or a cross so I'd like you to select one of these annotating tools Okay, and when you've, uh, when you've, when you've selected one, um, I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to click on the thing that I see. Okay, so first of all, I would like you with your annotate tool, I would like you just to stamp um, on the mountain. So can you, so where is the mountain? Please show me the mountain. Okay, that's great. Okay, oh, we've got a nice arrow in there. Okay, so I've got a lot of people annotating there. Perfect. Okay, so let's stop. So we all know what the mountain is. I'm going to clear. Okay, please, can you annotate? Where is a tree? Can you see a tree? Okay, well done. That's perfect. Okay, we've got two different trees there that everyone's annotating. Well done. I'm going to clear again. Um, can you see the sea? Can you see the sea? I'd like you to annotate, please, on the sea. Okay, now this is the sea, not the ocean, okay, because this is in Croatia. Um, so it is the sea, well done. Okay, there we go. And let's, do, let's try one that's a bit more difficult, okay? This is very small. Can you see a jetty? So it begins with J. Can you see a jetty? So if we don't know, a jetty is the place, it, it's, um, it's something that sticks out into the sea, and it's where a boat can leave or arrive to there we go someone's got it okay there we go someone put some nice arrows in there yeah so we can just see on the screen here uh, this this over here i'm putting the stars on this is a jetty and perhaps these out here these are also jetties okay very nice so we can use this as a way to perhaps teach some new vocabulary that students might not know um let's see let's try another one um how about this um this line here uh, between the water and the land okay can you type into the chat box what what do we call this line between the sea and the land can you type into the chat box so it begins with the sea yes we could call it the shore okay Yuri said the coastline yeah that's the word I was looking for so we've got the coastline here so the coast or the coastline okay this is where the land meets the water and if we have a town here on the coast Okay, and um, what do we call that town? It's a specific kind of town. So if it's a town on the coast, yes, we can call it a coastal city or a coastal town. That's perfect, okay? So, um, yeah, so we can use a nice photo like this. We can use it to, potentially flooded, says Andrew. Uh, we can use this to um, perhaps teach some new vocabulary um, and we can use it to, yeah, just sort of raise interest in the topic. Okay, I'm going to ask you another question now. So uh, this is a beautiful place. Um, can, you, can you write into the chat box, why might people go on holiday here? What would be nice about visiting this kind of location for a holiday? So let's see if we can get a few ideas in the chat box. Cherry says to unwind. Leora says it's refreshing. Um, it has variable scenery, maybe a yeah, beautiful scenery. Uh, it's relaxing. They can chill out there. That's good. Peace of mind, beautiful location. Very nice. Okay, some great, um, some great ideas there. Um, and how about activities? What kind of activities might people be able to enjoy here? Yeah, we've got water activities, uh, have seafood, go hiking, go swimming, go diving. 
Okay, very nice. So we've got a lot of different ideas. So lots of activities. Sleep in a hammock, says Tevin. Sunbathing, crabbing. Yeah, I'm not sure if there are crabs there. I, I guess there probably are. You can go on a jet ski. You can try parasailing, water skiing. Great. So we're getting yeah a lot of vocabulary. Um, and in a real lesson, we would be you know getting students to write this down. Okay, explaining what everything is and making sure that they've got it written down in their vocabulary notebook so that they can come back um, and study this later on. Okay, so well done. That's really um, really nice ideas there. Okay, so I'm going to minimise my picture okay and go back into the cpt so if i press this back button here i can go into the main uh, spread and you can see that all of the uh, all of the different activities are highlighted in yellow so i can just click on the one that i want that activity we just did there is actually a bonus activity that you can only find on the classroom presentation tool um, so the activity we just did um, i'll just show you again um, with the questions here. This is not actually in the student book. Okay, so this is only in the CPT. Okay, let's move on to the next activity. So this one um, it has two purposes. So firstly, uh, again, we're checking those past tenses. We're, we're focusing on irregular past tenses, and we're also preparing them for vocabulary and um, sentences they're going to hear in the video to make it easier to understand. So let's have a look at A. Um, it says here we something a photo of the city lights below and then we've got the verb take so we know this is an irregular verb so I want to type in here the irregular past tense of take so can anyone help me can you type into the chat bo box Jacqueline's got it first well done Jacqueline um, so we're going to type in here took and now when I click on the I that tells me that we have got the sentence correct Okay, so let's do a couple more. So B, it says we leave the city and Kitty got in there first. Yuri's also got it, so left. So let me type that in. We left the city. So I can click on there and I can see that we've got it correct. Um, C, it says we wake up next to this rock. Um, so someone has typed in woke up. So let me check. Okay, and we can see that these are correct, okay? So um, I'm just gonna type in one uh, incorrectly just to see what happens. Okay, so let's say I get the spelling wrong and I click on it. So it just tells me it's wrong, okay? And then I can click on it again and someone's correcting me there. Okay, uh, Joanna's saying bought. So I can click, I can type in and click and then it gives me the right answer, okay? So we can go through. Um, in the real classroom, I'd be asking students to read these out and checking pronunciation. Um, I know from experience, there are a few words that might cause a few problems, uh, like this word here, for example, we've got, this is the sea. Um, it says Mediterranean. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna ask you in the chat box, just with this word here, Mediterranean, <clears throat> can you type into the chat box for me, how many syllables does this word have, Mediterranean? So you just say it to yourself, Mediterranean. Okay, you can just say the word to yourself, Mediterranean. I want you to type in how many syllables. We've got five, six, five. Okay, someone's typed in Mediterranean, that's right. Okay, so I'm just gonna use my fingers and hopefully you can see, okay, how many syllables. So I'm gonna say, and I want you to say, you don't need to unmute. Um, I just want you to say the syllables, okay, after me. Okay, ready? So let's try. Okay, so we've got me, di, ta, re, Ni, un. Okay, so how many syllables have we got? We have got six syllables. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Bonnie. Okay, so we're going to say it again. I just want you to say it after me. Okay, I'm going to say it a bit faster. Mediterranean. And I'm going to say it one more time. Mediterranean. Okay, there we go. And we can, uh, we can help students, okay, with difficult words, okay, by modeling that for us. Um, how about the stress here? Wh which syllable has the stress on it? I'll say it again, Mediterranean. So is it syllable one? Is it syllable three? Okay, which number syllable do we think has the stress there? I'll just say it one more time, Mediterranean. Okay, so I've got three, four, and Kitty says on the the ra, okay, the ray. So it is, it's on the fourth syllable. Um, so I can just annotate on here. Uh, let's, I can draw Mediterranean. So it's actually this syllable here, which I've underlined. So we've got a six syllable word with the stress 
on the fourth word, okay, Mediterranean. The Mediterranean Sea is the, the sea um, in southern Europe, between southern Europe and North Africa. Okay, perfect. Well done. All right. Um, we're not going to go through and do all of these answers here because I think we all know them, but I'm just going to click the answers to show you what they are. Um, and as I said, these sentences here, um, these we're we going to use in a minute when we watch the video. So we just read through them and make sure that we understand them all. Uh, we might need to teach some other vocabulary such as the word sunset, okay, when the sun goes down. Um, yeah, and I think the rest of the vocabulary there is pretty uh, simple and self-explanatory. All right, so now we've had a look at those sentences, we've practiced the past simple tense, we're going to move on to the next activity, um, which is actually uh, watching the video. So what we're going to do here, um, we're going to watch just the first, um, the first few seconds of the video, and your task is to take these sentences, which we've just looked at, and to put them in the correct order. Okay, so you can see all of the sentences here. So I'm gonna play um, the, first few, the first few seconds, and when I, when I see one of these sentences, when I hear them say it, I'm going to stop the video, and I want you to type into the chat box, which one of these sentences did you hear? Okay, so I'm gonna, turn on the subtitles and we're going to start watching. I'm going to keep the video small here so that you can actually see the sentences. If you all had the book with you, I could have this on full screen, but seeing as you don't have the book, you need to see the sentences here. So I, I, I'm just going to keep the video on small. Um, something else to, to mention here, if you find the video too fast for your students, you can adjust the speed to make it slower. And you can also watch with the, uh, with the, the, the script underneath, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn that off. Okay, here we go. So let's watch. Um, if you have problems with the audio, okay, you may need to log in, uh, log out, and then log back in again, okay, because sometimes, um, sometimes the, the, the audio doesn't work if you haven't um, selected connect to computer when you log in, all right? So if you don't have audio, that's probably the problem. Okay, so let's watch and let's see. This is my friend Alistair Humphreys. He's an adventurer and a writer, and in the summer he invited me on a micro-adventure in Croatia. The idea was to fit in as much as we possibly could into 24 hours, and to make a short film about it. So first we made a toast. Thank goodness the rain stopped. We ate an ice cream. Slag. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. So I, I, I can see one of these sentences. Which one can you see? We bought some bread. Uh, I can see F, right, I can see F. So I can see this one, we ate some ice cream. So I'm gonna click on we ate some ice cream and I'm gonna move that to the top. I'm gonna drag it to the top. So now number one says we ate an ice cream. I'm gonna play the next sentence or next few sentences and I want you to look and see, um, can you find the next sentence for me? Al slapped the wall and we bought some bread, some grapes, some meat. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Okay, I can see one. Uh, who was first? I think Bonnie was first. Uh, Cherry was first. Well done, Cherry. So we've got here D. We bought some bread, some grapes, and some meat. So I'm going to put that one as number two. All right, and I'm going to play the next few sentences. Thank you. We walked down some steps, hired a car, and left the city. Okay, what one did we see next? We saw B, okay, a lot of you have said B. Okay, who was first? Who was first? I think it was Ni Wayan. Okay, well done. So it is B, we left the city. So I'm gonna put that one here. And we're just gonna do one more. We drove through a tunnel, further down the coast, past this boat, over a bridge, round this bend. Stall. <laughs> we found a river and went for a swim. We saw some fish. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there. And who was first this time? Again, Ni Wan, very quick. It was Jay. We found a river. Well done. So I'm going to put this up, okay, in place number four. Okay, well done. That's great. So what we're going to do now, um, we've got the first four. So I'm going to, you can see numbers five down to 10. So I'm just going to play the rest of the video. And your task is to, as you watch the video, just to try and write down the order that from number five down to number 10, okay, which order do these happen in? And we're gonna watch the rest of the video. I'm not gonna stop it. Okay, you can just watch it, enjoy the video and complete the task. 
and a dragonfly, and we sat in the river's current. Then we drove up into the mountains, we stopped at a castle where Al sat on a wall, and I tried to do an interview. We drove along this trail where we finally abandoned the car and distributed all the food that we had. You got the light one. We walked up a path, through some trees, saw a butterfly, we hiked further up out of the tree line, and finally made it onto the top of a mountain with an incredible view of the coastline. We had some water and watched the sunset, we made a sandwich and had a beer, we took a photo of the city lights below. You could hear music in a bar playing faintly in the distance. I pointed rather courageously, as did Al. And we slept in bivy bags on the top of the mountain. We woke up next to this rock, yawned and drank some water. We rolled up the sleeping mats, I ate a banana and Al brushed his teeth. I filmed some sunshine and Al phoned his mum. Yep, very well, thank you. How are you? Then we walked off the mountain under the clear morning skies. We walked down past the town, had a shower on the way, found a cafe, ordered a coffee. Al ruined an interview, but I struggled with the focus. Then we kept walking till we reached the shoreline, walked down to a beach, and we went swimming in the Mediterranean Sea. It was a great little adventure. Thanks, Al. Well, we cannot hear you now. Thank you, Kitty. Sorry, I yeah, I, I put myself on mute. So um, yeah, we're just going to check the rest of the answers. Um, I can see a lot of you putting the answers in. Let's see. I can see Trang has put H I A C E. So it's Kitty. Okay. Yeah. So we've got some similar answers. So H I A C E seems to be seems to be the correct answer. Let's try. So H I A C E. Okay. And how about G? No one's put G. So we seem to be missing G. So does anybody know where it goes? We've got G. G goes above H. Okay. Shall we try it? Okay. Let's try above H. Okay. So I can just put that in. Oh, and that, that's put H to the bottom. Okay. Okay, well, let's check. Okay, let's check our answers. Okay, so here we go. Um, so I, I actually made, I made a mistake there. Um, here we go. So these are the correct answers. Okay, I, I was having a bit of a problem putting them in the right order there. Uh, but we can see, I think most of you got them right with maybe we've left out G, but Andrew was right. It did go above H. Okay, so here are the answers and we can see them there. Um, I did notice in the chat box, someone said it'd be better to do it without the subtitles. I think that's a good point. Um, I think ideally we want to use this video more than one time. So the first time that students watch it, it would be a good idea to do it without the subtitles. Um, so they can, they, can, you know, they can watch. And we could just really watch the video the first time without the task. And then the second time we watch it, we could get them to do it with, with the task. Because this is not an easy activity for pre-intermediate students. So we can do it a couple of times, once, with the sub, uh, once without the subtitles and once with the subtitles. And it's a nice comment there from Annie. Uh, she says, it looks like a nice adventure. It does, doesn't it? It looks like a very nice adventure and all done in 24 hours, sleeping on the mountain, swimming in the sea. Okay, eating some nice local food. So that does look like a very exciting adventure. Okay, well done. So we're gonna move on to the next uh, activity. And uh, the next activity is um, one which involves multiple choice questions. And sometimes more than one option is possible. So we could choose one, two, or all three of these answers to see um, to see, uh, yeah, to choose which are the correct answers here. So the first one done as an example, it says about Alistair, um, is he a filmmaker, an adventurer, or a writer? And we can see here that he has two of these things. So in this case, two out of three is correct. So let's try a couple of these together. Um, for, for number two, uh, we've got here, what did they hire? So we've got a car, a motorbike, or bicycles. So can anyone remember um, which one did they hire? Was it a car? 
Was it a motorbike? Was it bicycles? Or was it all three? So can you type into the chat box for me? Uh, Indus put car. Okay, so we're going to click on car. Okay, was it just car or do you want to select another one? Okay, I think we're just going to go with car and then we, we, can, we can click on here and we can check the answer. Okay, so um, let's go through a couple of these. So how about for number three, they drove, uh, so through a tunnel, over a bridge, round a bend. Cherry's saying A. Uh, does any, was it just A or do we need to click any of the other ones? Uh, Kitty's put B and C. Okay, so we're gonna, collect, we're gonna click all of these. Um, so I'm not gonna go through and do all of the, uh, gonna, gonna do all of the questions here um, because we, we, we don't have a lot of time today. Usually this lesson will be a bit longer than this. Um, but this is also another opportunity to teach some, uh, teach some new vocabulary. We've got a nice picture here of a dragonfly. So um, this is one that perhaps pre-intermediate students wouldn't know. So it's easy for us to teach that. This is a dragonfly. Um, and we can go through, we can click. And then after, after we've selected them, we can then watch the video again. We can go through and um, we can check the answers and students will be able to correct what they've told you the first time round. Okay, so um, as I've got my eye on the time, okay, we're not going to go through and do, uh, we're not going to watch it again. We will watch the video later, okay, but for a different activity. Okay, um, let's just check the answers just in case you're curious. Okay, so we can see here that yes, we were right there. They did go all three. Um, they, they saw all three of these, a fish, a dragonfly and a butterfly. They stopped at a river and a castle. Um, they could hear music. Uh, he brushed his teeth and phoned his mother. And afterwards they had a shower and they watched a coffee. Uh, they had a coffee. All right, so I'm now gonna move on to uh, the next activity, which is uh, the vocabulary activity. So I mentioned in my objectives earlier, uh, guessing mean, meaning through context. So we're gonna try this all together. Um, so normally what I would do for this activity is put students into groups and I would give them a mini whiteboard or just a piece of paper um, with A, B and C. And um, I would stop each question. I would give them about 15 seconds to decide what the answer is. I would give them a countdown and get them to hold up the correct answer. Um, as we're doing this online, we'll do it slightly differently. So I would like you, um, you can type into the chat box uh, whether you think the answer is A, B or C. Okay, so let's have a look at the activity. The idea was to fit in as much as we possibly could into 24 hours and to make a short film about it. Okay, so let me just explain a little bit more. So this is in context because it's giving you the real sentence, okay, from the video. The idea was to fit in as much as we possibly could. And then it's asking this highlighted bit, what does this actually mean? So what does fit something in mean? Fit in as much as possible. So we could pause here and we could get students to discuss first. They could just discuss in their group and then we can give them the options. So the options are travel as far as possible, relax and rest as much as possible, or do as many things as possible. So let's have a look what people think. Um, we've got uh, an A, we've got mostly C's coming in here. Okay, so let's have a look at what the answer is. Okay, in the video, if we just leave it playing, it highlights the correct answer is C. So well done, everybody. It is C. And then the teacher can explain a little bit more. So when we fit something in, it means that, yeah, we're, we're, we're trying to do a lot of things, okay, in a short amount of time, okay, doing a lot in a short amount of time. So try to explain as simply as we can. Okay, well done. So this is to sit some, fit something in. Let's try the next one. We ate an ice cream. Slag. Al slapped a wall. Okay, so this is slightly different. So here the context, okay, is actually com yeah, coming from the video itself. It's coming from the video images. So as it says Al slapped a wall, we actually see him slapping the wall, which makes it very easy to understand. Um, yeah, so let's see. We, again, we get the students to discuss and then we give them the options. Okay, so we, again, we've got people writing C into the box. Okay, and let's have a look and check. 
and it means to hit something with the palm of your hand, okay, with an open palm. We saw some fish and a dragonfly, and we sat in the river's current. So current is a potentially difficult word because there are um, there are different meanings of the word current, several different meanings. Um, so in this context, what does it mean? So here it obviously doesn't mean a, um, a small piece of fruit, okay, which has a different spelling, but the same sound. Um, so what does it mean? Does it mean bottom? Does it mean moving water? Or does it mean side? So a lot of you are putting in B. Okay, so let's check. Well done, very nice. And uh, this is a good opportunity to use some uh, concept checking. So, you know, students, if they've told you it means moving water, so we can concept check. So we can say, um, so uh, does a river have a current? So can you just type into the chat box for me? Does a river have a current? So yes or no? If you could type into the chat box, say yes. We've got a few people saying yes. So yeah, a river has, has a current. Um, how about a... A sea, does the sea have a current? And we've got, yes, so we, the sea does have a current. So the water moves in and then it moves out again, which we call the tide. Okay, but this is also a kind of current. And also there will be other currents sometimes moving up and down. We call it a rip tide when the current is moving across the beach. So yeah, in the sea, the water moves. And finally, how about a swimming pool? So does the swimming pool have a current? Okay, Jacqueline says no. So although the water can move, like we can move the water with our hands, a swimming pool itself, it, it, the pool does not move, okay? There, there's, no, there's no moving, the water doesn't move across by itself. So we can use this uh, concept checking just to make sure that students really understand, um, yeah, really understand um, the concepts that we're looking at here. Okay, so we're gonna stop that activity there, but you get the general idea. There are three more questions on here which we could do. <clears throat> and we're going to move on. Uh, to, we're going to move on to the final activity. <clears throat> um, actually, there are two activities. Um, what we would do here, um, I'm just going to um, explain it. Um, it'll be a bit little difficult for us to do today. Um, but what we what we would do here is we would put students um, into pairs, and we would turn off the sound, and we would play the video, and we're going to get students to actually describe to their partner what they can see. All right. So that's a little difficult for us to do today. Um, like that. Um, I suppose we could, uh, we could try um, a few seconds, I suppose. Um, so let me, uh, let me just start the video and take it to about 15 seconds. Um, so maybe um, I'm going to get a, uh, I'm going to get a volunteer. Um, so I'd like someone to, to volunteer to turn on their audio um, on, their, on their microphone and just to tell us what they can see in the video. So if you would like to volunteer, can you type into the chat box, I volunteer? And then we will just, um, just have a quick demonstration of um, what this activity would like, be, look like. So just to be clear, I want somebody to um, just to speak along with the video and just say what they can see. So for example, uh, they will say something like, uh, we had a beer. Um, okay, here we go. So Tevin is saying, I'll do it. Okay, so I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, Tevin. Um, can, can you turn on your, on your microphone? Can you unmute for me? Yeah, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good, thanks. Great, okay, well, thank you very much. So I'm just gonna play the video. I just want you to say what you can see. So I'm having a, uh, we, let's say uh, we, okay, because it's supposed to be a narration. So we had a beer, we had an ice cream, we ate an ice cream. So just like that, yeah. I'm just gonna give you 20 seconds or so just to- um, All still in past tense, yeah? Yeah, all still in the past tense. tense. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, uh, we had a beer. We had a nice relaxed conversation. We went shopping for ice cream and touched some walls. We looked at some grapes and cut up some meats, bought some things. We walked down the stairs. Yeah. We took a nice drive to a scenic little city. Um, we took in the sights. Um, we listened to some music, had a little bit of a party in the car, <laughs> cracked some jokes. <laughs> okay all right and I, i'm gonna stop you there okay well done that was really good okay excellent job right cool. okay thank you very much um yeah so no th 
can everybody give uh, give Tevin a little round of a virtual round of applause there <laughs> for doing such a great job. And uh, yeah, if we were doing this, um, you know, as a real activity, we, we could also do an activity where we could get one student, you know, with their back to the with their back to the to the, the screen and the other student could explain what they're ha what's happening and then they could swap round halfway. Um, you know, so the other student gets a chance as well. Um, another activity I like to do with this, it was very fast and Tevin did, dealt with that really well. You can actually slow this down, as I mentioned earlier. So probably what I should have done is put that on 0 0.75 speed to make it a bit easier. And another really good activity which you can do online um, or you could get them to do for homework. Um, if you put this slower on half speed, uh, you can actually um, put the put the captions on there and you can get them to record their voice at home okay or in, or in the classroom or at homework so you can play the video and you can actually get them to read along and record their voice and then they could send that into the teacher later so the teacher can give them some feedback uh, on their pronunciation um, you know and and on, on their speaking so also getting students to record their voice is very good it's also very good for the students because it often makes them aware of um, perhaps problems they have with their pronunciation that they're not aware of when you force them to actually listen to themselves speaking um, so that's another activity that we could get them to do is yeah record their voices okay now we are at 1050 at the moment <clears throat> So I want to make sure I leave enough time for some questions. So um, yeah, the, the, the final activity, which um, I, I was hoping to do today, but I think probably we, we don't quite have enough time to do it. So I'm going to explain it. So the, the focus of this lesson is to get students to actually plan their own 24 hour micro adventure. And um, this is, I think, very interesting. And Alistair has his own website, <clears throat> um, the Explorer here. And um, students can go on that website to have a look. He has lots of ideas um, about things that you can do, which makes a very cheap, um, a cheap way of having your own little adventure. <clears throat> and once we put students into a group, they're going to discuss where, where they will go, what they will do, what they will see. And then they're going to basically discuss it. They're going to have to negotiate what they want to do. They're going to have to perhaps talk about the cost. So there's lots of critical thinking involved here. There's lots of collaboration. So it's great for 21st century skills. And then once they've decided on what they're going to do, they're going to think about how they want to present this. So they could do it as a poster. They could do it perhaps as a PowerPoint. Um, you, you don't have to have visuals. They could just come to the front of the class and deliver it to the class, you know, in their groups. Um, yeah, uh, there we go. And uh, Paulus is saying they, they're now practicing the future tense. That's right. So they could do it as the future tense. If you wanted to, if you found that they're still struggling with the past tense, what you could do, you could get them to imagine that they actually did, um, that they actually have already done it. And then you could get them to present it as a kind of review of the trip that they did. So we could do it um, actually in the past tense as well, if that's what you want to practice. So they could either do it as a plan or they could do it as something, um, a holiday trip they already took. Um, yeah, so unfortunately we don't, um, I was gonna put you into breakout rooms. We don't really have time to do that today. So this would be, uh, this would be the homework, okay? Um, either in class, you can do it if you have time or you can set that. Um, it's a nice activity to get them to do outside the classroom. If you are teaching adult students, you could actually encourage them to take the trip. You know, if you're, um, I don't know, I'm in Singapore. So if my students are actually in Singapore and they plan a trip, it doesn't have to be 24 hours, it could be a day trip. They could actually then go and do the trip for real and then come and give feedback on what happened. So a really nice way to encourage them to meet up outside the class, to practice their English. Remember, this is for adult students, okay, meeting up outside the class and practicing their English, giving them an opportunity to use the English that they've been um, that they'd be learning outside the classroom. Okay, so um, we've got a few minutes left, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna stop sharing this, and I'm going to just ask if we have any questions that anyone would like to ask about the lesson that we've done today, or just in general. I'm gonna go back into my PowerPoint. 
Okay, so yeah, so if anyone has any any questions that they would like to ask, uh, Tevin has one. Yes, Tevin, what, what's your question? Um, so it's a little bit off topic, but obviously this was catered more towards adult students. Yeah. Um, but if we wanted to tweak some of these activities towards like younger students, yeah. um, would it also be feasible to have them plan a trip? Because they don't have much knowledge of what's going on around them. Um, yeah. Relative to an adult, so would they still be able to do that? Do you think? If I think if, so. If I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, obviously, it depends. It depends on the on the age on the age group. I mean, for, for for very young or lower primary, they might be struggling a little bit. But certainly for you know sort of higher primary, I mean, they they've been on trips before, right? You know, their parents will have taken them to different places. They know the kind of places that they like. So I think, yes, I think, I think they're definitely capable of that. And even for very young learners, if you, if you give them some ideas, if you, if you brainstorm first, yeah, um, you know, if you brainstorm ideas, or as Andrew was saying, if you give them a brochure, they can look at the pictures, um, you know, and they can pick out some things they'd like to do. You could just ask them, you know, what, what did you do? What did you do at the weekend? Right, you know, talk about the different activities they've done and then get them to choose from them. Um, so yeah, I, I think definitely um, this we would be able to um, we'd be able to adapt this task for young learners. Um, let's see. It says here, are the activities in life pre intermediate aligned with the real B two first exams? So uh, life pre intermediate. This is from Cynthia. So life pre intermediate is uh, B one. Um, but yes, it, it is aligned. Um, it is aligned with the B one exams. Um, and you will find the different task types in life. Um, we also have on the companion site, um, we also have a correlation guide. Um, so on the companion site that um, Kitty put in the, in the chat box earlier, um, under the teaching resources. So if you're using life, um, you will have a, a password to get in there and it, um, yeah, there, there is a correlation that's been done between life and and uh, CEFRB1. Um, yeah, so, so there is a strong correlation, yes. Uh, let's see, um, are there any other questions in here? Let me just have a look. Um, is there any replacement test format to sit student appropriate with their language level? Uh, I'm not, I don't quite understand what you mean by replacement test format, uh, Paul. Oh, placement. Yes, there is. Um, yeah, there, there, there are placement tests available um, for life. Um, so again, they're available on the companion site. Um, so yeah, we have uh, full placement tests, which will put them in at one of the six levels. <clears throat> um, so these, these, will, these are on the companion site. Uh, you can find these on our companion site. And Kitty has just put it in the, uh, in the chat box. If you just scroll up a little bit, uh, you'll be able to see it in the chat box there. Um, Yuri said, how much time would you give for the breakout session pair work? I mean, that depends on your class and it depends how, how into it they are. Um, if you had a very talkative class, um, adult class, um, you know, you could, you could give them as much time as they need. I, I, I think I would give them um, at least 10 minutes for this, but I think I've had classes where you could spend half an hour on this. Um, it depends how much detail you want to go into. Um, yeah, I, I would say in a class, it depends how much time you've got, at least 10 minutes, and you could really make it a full lesson. Um, you could get them to research it for homework and then actually to work on it in class in the next lesson and then give the presentation. So I think there's a lot of flexibility in this kind of task. Um, it depends how, you know, how much detail you want to go into. Okay, so I think we're, we're running out of time. Um, so I am just going to uh, quickly uh, mention a couple of things before the end of the session. Um, so we have got um, some upcoming webinars. Uh, let's see, so the next webinar we've got um, next week, um, uh, Andrew is going to present, and Andrew's webinar is um, from Look and See, which is a very young learner title. 
So he will be doing a lesson which is for three-year-old students. So it's going to be a big contrast to what you've seen today. And I think very young learners is a growing, a growing area and one that a lot of teachers uh, don't have a lot of confidence with. So I, I really recommend that you sign in, uh, sign up, uh, register for this next week. Um, yeah, so that's with Andrew next week. And um, I will just remind you, okay, about the certificate. We, we're going to send you a follow-up email. In that follow email, there will be the recording of this session. There will be a survey. Okay, take the survey. And at the end of the survey, you will have the certificate waiting for you there. Um, one more thing before we finish. Okay, please. Uh, I would like to recommend that you go to our Facebook page, okay, ELT NGL Asia. We're also on WeChat, and we also have a YouTube channel, um, which I think Kitty has uh, just put, yeah, Kitty has just put both of these into the chat box. So if you click on the links now, you can go there. On our YouTube channel, you will see all of the webinars that we have done, all of our professional development webinars are there. So if you've missed one or, or you want to just go back and see what we've done, you'll find webinars there for adult titles, for young learners, uh, for teen titles. So there's a big range. We've got, um, we've got webinars on how to teach online. So we've got a lot of variety on there. Um, yeah, so please do go and check them out. And um, I just get one a comment there. This 10 a.m. time slot is somewhat inconvenient for workers on duty. Okay, that's a good point, Ragnarok. So I think, um, yeah, we, we will do some, um, we will do some uh, research into that. And I think we're going to include, uh, perhaps on this survey or maybe on next week's survey, um, we're going to give you the opportunity to tell us which time slot might be more convenient for you. So thank you for bringing that up. And um, yeah, we will definitely look into it. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Um, Andrew's also saying we're considering running two sessions, repeated sessions at different times. Yeah, so we will let you know uh, soon. Okay, yeah, if we're going to do that uh, two different time slots. So once again, thanks everyone for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed the webinar and enjoy the rest of your day, your day and we will see you next time. Okay, goodbye.